Today we're going to talk about global trade and development. International trade is the exchange of capital, goods, and services across international borders or territories. In most countries, such trade represents a significant share of gross domestic product. Gross domestic product, or GDP, is the total value of goods produced and services provided in a country during one year. It's a good measure of economic success or wealth. While international trade has been present throughout much of history, its economic, social, and political importance has escalated in recent centuries as we have become more interdependent. Trade is also a mechanism for potentially balancing an uneven distribution of resources. Some nations may specialize in producing certain goods and services due to their resource availability. On the flip side, they might lack the resources for other goods and services. Trade allows countries to exchange goods for mutual benefit. So as an example, Let's look at exports. Exports are goods that are sent out of the country to foreign markets for a profit. In the United States, we supply wheat, corn, and other grains other countries lack. Imports are goods that are brought into the country from foreign markets at a cost. An example in the United States is Oil. We do not have enough oil to sustain our population. Thus, it is a major import. Governments seek a trade balance to have a healthy economy. Balance between exports and imports is crucial. More imports and exports means that more money is expended than is received. And you always want to have a healthy balance. You don't want to be indebted. Some governments impose taxes, trade, and policies on trade to support a healthy economy. The World Trade Organization is a multinational entity that gathers to discuss and mediate trade policy between nations. The advantages of the WTO is that nations can work together to resolve disputes and implement fair practice. There are disadvantages as well. Many critics believe that the WTO put money and free trade over the environment and human rights. They also believe that favor is skewed more toward the richer nations at the expense of the poorer one. Global trade boosts the economy, provided it is balanced, but it also creates problems. Think about how trade relations might get sticky. What is the potential hazard of depending upon another country for essential resources? If one country is trade dependent on another country with severe human rights violations, how might that increase the likelihood of looking the other way? In the world of increased globalization, how might trade and development affect geography, physical, and human? Let's turn to trade routes. Trade routes are determined by geography. And it's simply a way for transportation, technology, and international relations to be facilitated. For example, the search for spices and new trade markets led to the discovery and settlements of the Americas in the 1500s. Also, the United States has a great interest in the state of the Middle East due to our reliance on oil. Today, technology is changing trade routes at a rapid pace. For example, now there are planes to bypass areas that were hard to navigate previously. 
such a large expanse of desert. Trade sanctions. The trade penalty imposed by one nation onto another or more other nations. Sanctions can be unilateral, imposed by one country on one other country, or multilateral, imposed by one or more countries on a number of different countries. Often allies will impose multilateral sanctions on, dif on their foes. An example of trade sanction is the set of stringent penalties the United States imposed against Cuba from 1963 to 2000. In the year 2000, some of those sanctions were repealed, specifically those on medical and agricultural goods. A trade embargo is more all-encompassing than a sanction. It will restrict all trade with the country or aim to reduce the exchange of specific good. A trade embargo will restrict anyone from exporting to the target nation. Because many nations rely on global trade, an embargo is a powerful tool for influencing a nation's action. Before we move on, let's think about how trade sanctions might hurt a population that has no control over its government. So there are some things worth considering whenever you impose a sanction. Here is a chart of U.S. trade sanctions in different countries for different reasons. Some might be political repression, extremist violence, supporting terrorism, proliferating weapons. There are many reasons why the U.S. or other countries might impose a trade sanction. Economic development. Economic activities and trade patterns are strong indicators of economic development or the level of economic development. One measure of economic development is gross domestic product, GDP. So this map here shows the gross domestic product by region. The darker the blue, the higher the GDP. So you see that United States is one of the darker blue countries. So that is positive for us. Developed countries enjoy a higher standard of living. There's access to better health care, education, transportation, infrastructure, and communication. Many would like to see an increase in the standard of living in underdeveloped nations, but there is disagreement on the best way to achieve this. When wealthy nations invest in poorer ones, there is an opportunity to improve the economy, but there's a confluence of factors involved. Let's look at the determinant of economic development. The chart below posits that it takes more than resources and capital to successfully increase economic development. Capital is money or investment. For example, is the technology and education available? Is there a strong enough government to allow economic freedom for its people? Is the country politically stable? So some of the economic factors in economic development are capital formation, just the ability to obtain investment, natural resources, marketable surplus of agriculture, conditions in foreign trade, in the economic system. For example, if a system, a command economy, is a capitalist, is a communist, is a socialist. Non-economic factors also play a role in economic development. Human resources. Is there enough technical know-how and general education? What about political freedom, social organization, level of corruption, 
for desire to develop. So an example of how a non-economic factor can inhibit development is when a country invests money into another country that is corrupt and instead of using that money to develop the economy or businesses or industry, perhaps corrupt leaders might take the money for themselves and for the government coffers, but in no way using it to help the people or to build the economy. So um, these are all things that we have to consider. But that's about it. And there are some resources available in this lesson about the economic chart here. It goes into more detail. And um, also the World Trade Organization. So you can look at those. Um, the quiz will be mostly based on these slides with a couple questions about the World Trade Organization and determinants of economic development.